is the end of a sensational weekend here in Monte Carlo. Yesterday we thought it might be Lewis Hamilton on pole position. It turned into an all-Ferrari front row. Today we thought it might be a Ferrari 1-2 and it's turned into a quite extraordinary Monaco Grand Prix victory for Lewis Hamilton. But that's Monaco, Mark, especially Monaco with this kind of weather around. Uh, always. If you just get some rain here around this circuit in particular, it's a great cocktail for excitement and we certainly had that during this race. But I have to say, again, Lewis Hamilton, fantastic job. And importantly, he's done this, he's won this event, but he walks away from here leading the World Championship once again. And you have to say also on behalf of McLaren, they used all their famous experience around this place. Yeah, they did, even to the point that they used Kovalainen to go out and put tyres on and just test the conditions and feed that information back into the play for Lewis. And um, I think they did everything they could within their powers to try and give him the best opportunity, but he made the most of it. Well, Lewis is delighted, as we've seen already, and the McLaren boss, Ron Dennis, he's quite chuffed as well. Let's hear from Ron. Well, Ron, I know you love winning here. How much does this one mean? Uh, it's just great. Uh, so happy for the team, for Lewis. Uh, brilliant strategy switch. Um, it really paid off. Did you think it might not happen? Did you have any doubts when he hit the wall? Oh, it didn't help, did it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so disappointed for Hake again. A fantastic race. I mean, uh, we had the pace for a 1-2. Uh, it's just so disappointing for him, but... Uh, his opportunity to come and we'll enjoy today, that's for sure. And a bit nervous when the time came to switch to dry tyres? Well, we, uh, we switched Hakey a little earlier just to check and get a uh, feedback and make quite sure it was the right thing to do. Um, we had plenty of tread left on the tyres, but it was clearly the quicker tyre. Uh, you never know when the safety car is going to come out. Well, we're extending our transmission to get all the reaction to this uh, extraordinary victory from Lewis Hamilton today. Let's try to tell the story of it. Um, it was a great start from Lewis, and um, Raikkonen got rather bogged down at the start. Yeah, Raikkonen didn't get off the line as he would have wanted to. He got a little bit too much wheel spin, but Massa did everything he needed to do to get into turn one. But Lewis had the advantage going in there. He just managed to take Raikkonen off the start line, and that's where the beginning of his race started. So let's take a look at that start. Uh, Raikkonen, a little bit after that. Just watch this with Lewis, gets to track there, Massa again, textbook stuff, but Raikkonen losing out with just the uh, extra wheel spin there on the left-hand side. Lewis, as I say, just dives down that pit lane, trying to think guys there getting off that start line, Steve. Very greased conditions and very difficult situation to actually monitor what level of grip you've got when you arrive at Turn 1. And it was the start of what became a very disappointing race for the world champion as well. I mean, Kimi Raikkonen had a torrid time in many ways. Uh, mistakes were evident, he'd come in several times, nose cone hanging off. Uh, a race that he will want to forget, but uh, one that Lewis will definitely remember. Over the opening few laps, it was Massa who pulled away, uh, and the, the task for Lewis was to keep it calm, keep it quiet. Uh, and what happened? Uh, yeah, <laughs> he was trying to keep calm, but uh, he was just pushing a little bit. And Lewis, fortunately, does damage to the rim and the tyre deflates, but he manages to get the car back to that pit lane. And because he's so far around the, the lap at that point, he didn't lose too much time. Yeah, you talk more about the good fortune. What kind of damage could he have done with an impact like that? Well, he could have had suspension damage, and that would have been terminal for this race. But in fact, you know, just having that, uh, that collapsed tyre there, he managed to limp his way round. And because he had a little bit of advantage with the spread over that first lap, he still managed to come out in P4 anyway. So not too bad in terms of uh, damage limitation. So how quick were McLaren uh, to react when he came in and thinking what lay ahead in the course of this race? Well, of course, they'd have had something already written down on paper, so to speak, to know if something like this yeah. happened and occurred. But they were very quick. They made a decision very fast. They put something into play filled him with a lot of fuel on board, put the tyres on, and off he went. And then it was down to Lewis, basically, to go and get himself back in the rhythm and get track position gained. He had to drive aggressively for that middle part of the race, a bit like he did a couple of weeks ago in, in Istanbul. Yeah, a typical Lewis Hamilton style. He just kept pushing and pushing, and you could see the sector times coming down, coming down. He was pretty much the quickest guy on the circuit for most of the race itself. Big thing for me, though, today is Ferrari. A huge disappointment for those guys. Imagine them lining up in the front row with pole position. They come away just with a podium. Well, as Lewis was pushing on in the middle part of that race, all around him was evidence of what could happen if things went wrong. You're just getting at the top of the, uh, the hill there in Massonet. A little bit too much water laying around, and I think the, uh, the problem with these guys, they were running with the intermediate tyre, just got caught out. Just look at the level of spray, though. Look, you can't, you've got hardly any visibility at that stage. It wasn't trying to get out the car. It's been an, an interesting weekend for David Coulter to say the absolute least, and uh, we can hear from him now. Well, David, a day of contrasts for, for the Red Bull team. I mean, obviously, uh, problems for you at the barrier. You weren't the only driver to have an issue there. Was there a particular run of water across there? Well, obviously, it was raining a little bit heavier at the start of the race, um, and I just got in the spray of Nakajima, caught a downshift, and grabbed the rear. 
corrected, corrected, but ran out of road. So, just, you know, one of the hazards of Monaco. There were all sorts of incidents and accidents, driver losing front rings, rear rings. How difficult um, was it in those conditions with no traction control? How much was that an, an, an influence on all those incidents? Uh, well, in actual fact, I think, uh, you know, it's more about momentum into the corner that takes people into the barriers here. You didn't really see too many people spin on power. Uh, you just have to be very, very careful. I think Monaco tends to be very much point and squirt, uh, especially in the wet. So you'll, I think the wet running will be more of an issue on a more open circuit where you're carrying high speed through sweeping corners and places like that. You pleased for your teammate though? Yeah, it's great for the team. You know, I haven't seen what the constructor situation is, but um, unfortunately Williams did score with Nakajima, so they're probably still ahead. But you know, I just need to get some points on the board. It's been a shocking start to the season. Thanks, David. Thanks. It has been a desperate start to the season for DC, isn't it? It's been Terry, uh, very uh, tough for David. He hasn't had a good start to the season, and I think uh, he'll be thinking about that. But, you know, another race, a couple of results, and uh, before you know it, everybody will be talking about DC continuing. Another driver who was involved in another, a number of incidents in the middle of the pack, Fernando Alonso, the former world champion. He was driving with a lazy suggestion that I'm going to come through. Now, I don't know whether he felt that Heinfeld was just going to move out the way, but that's clearly not going to be the case. And what he did do is just cause a lot of damage to both of them. And uh, I think it probably cost him a result as, uh, as the race went on. Now, at this point, the rain clouds were clearing, but there was a forecast of more rain possibly moving in. There was a prospect of going on to dry tyres. Uh, what was the dilemma facing the teams and the drivers? Well, all of the people out there, drivers included, were thinking whether there's rain coming. The guys who were on the heavy fuel load had the flexibility of staying out and monitoring and seeing whether things were going to come their way. And then they made their decisions based upon that. But some of the guys who had gone with the two-stop strategy had to make the, uh, the stops. And some of them took tyres on, which was the wrong tyre. But you know, that's what this is all about, this uh, Monaco track with wet conditions. We'll pick up the story of how Lewis won it from that point in just a few minutes. In fact, we can do it now via Lewis himself, because uh, the winner of the Monaco Grand Prix is in the press conference. And Lewis, an eventful day from start to finish. But let's begin at the beginning. A good start into P2 and then a little bit close to the wall at the tobac corner. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I was able to get a good start. I felt comfortable at the beginning. I, you know, I knew I had uh, a good, uh, good car underneath me, and I knew that I'd be able to uh, to challenge Felipe. But at a, at some point, I couldn't really see anything, so you know, I s just stayed in second. And um, as the rain came down, we, I mean, because you got so much spray, you can't see if it's raining more or less. And through uh, turn 12 to back, there was sort of a river coming across there. And as I was catching Felipe, I hit this river and just uh, just oversteered and just slid across into the barrier. I couldn't believe it. And um, I knew I only just touched it, but I had a rear puncture. And um, fortunately, I was able to tell the team quickly. And they, they were able to, to react as quick as possible and get out. And uh, I mean, they did a fantastic job. And without them, I wouldn't have been able to do it today. And then two other events took place. The safety car came out shortly afterwards, which allowed you to, to regain some of that time. <coughs> and then beyond that, you were able to, stri to switch strategies. And as the weather changed, that played into your hands it did um i mean when the when the weather's like this when it's when it's gonna when it starts to rain then we had an idea that it's probably gonna start to dry and we just had to the important thing was to keep it on the track but i can't explain to you how difficult it was for all of us um we're just aquaplaning all the time and you're just tiptoeing almost but um fortunately the the strategy um obviously we had to change it and it worked into my hands um and uh but the pace i had was ridiculous you know I was I had one second on people for the majority of the race and I was it was quite easy and so I was comfortable setting that pace and I was asking the team do I need to go quicker or quicker and they said no so uh, I mean there was a point where I was 40 seconds ahead and I thought okay 20 more laps just keep the gap the same or just use whatever but then the safety car came out but it's by no means over because you still have the decision to make about whether to go to dries, perhaps stay on intermediates, and then the Nico Rosberg accident, shards on the track, <coughs> potential punctures, and then the restart behind the safety car. Yeah, yeah. Well, I said it was going to be an eventful race, didn't I? But, um, yeah, it's, it's, I hope Nico's OK. Um, the, the team came over the radio and said he, he should be OK. Um, but, uh, yeah, for sure, that, was a, that looked like a big shunt. But the safety car coming out again, I lost that big gap. But fortunately, on the, on the tyres that I was on, I mean, I mean, the team came across the radio and said, you still have 30 laps on these tyres. And I'm thinking, well, the track's getting dry. I know Felipe's just done his stop, and um, that's a long, long way to go. But uh, I managed to look after them. And uh, I think that's really what, what gave us uh, the win, you know. Then I could stay, out them, stay on them for as long as I wanted, and we even pitted early. 
and um, it was pretty smooth sailing from there. And what was it like at the restart with the with the pressures and perhaps the temperatures down a bit? I seem to do a good job. You know, I've, I'm used to it. I remember last year in Canada, I had to, to do the same thing, so it was it was no sweat. And um, you know, I think I think everyone probably struggled getting the tyres back up to temperature, but I was I was fortunate enough, got a good gap, and uh, I just kept it nice and cool at the end. But counting down the laps, bloody hell, that took a long, long time. <laughs> A long two-hour race. Congratulations, E. Lewis. Thank a you. brilliant victory for you. And Robert Kubitz, a great drive from you two, leading the race for a long time, but basically on that two-stop strategy, difficult, I guess, to compete with Lewis, who had effectively switched to the one-stopper. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, we started the race with, I think, two low pressures. I was struggling a lot, first three, four laps. Then, uh, fortunately, Raikkonen didn't get penalty. I was much quicker than him, but I couldn't overtake when you were running behind some car. I couldn't see nothing. Uh, then uh, Felipe has done mistake in corner one, so I was leading. Uh, second stint, uh, I get a lot of graining rear tires. Uh, Felipe just came out after his only one pit stop uh, in front of me. He was uh, much heavier, but uh, although he was pushing, pulling away, then uh, I clean graining rear tires get better, and uh, I was lapping two, three seconds quicker than him, uh, but couldn't overtake him. And uh, fortunately, Glock was in front of us uh, with uh, groove tires. And uh, as soon as I saw he was much quicker than us, uh, I just called the team to, to change tires. Uh, and fortunately, we did it quicker than uh, Felipe and uh, managed to overtake him there. And yeah, I mean, uh, quite a lot of miracles uh, that I'm still, I finished the race. I mean, it was a very hard race for me. and. Uh, uh, I think uh, second place was maximum with uh, our performance of this weekend, and I'm very happy. Yes, yeah, a great result. Congratulations, particularly good pit work. Felipe, turning to you now, leading the race. Turn one, you like turn one, one in qualifying. It, it did the job for you, but in the race, not so lucky. Yeah, for sure. I mean, all of us had a little moment. I mean, in the race like that, uh, it's so easy to have a, a small loss of concentration or whatever, I just break over the line and I couldn't stop the car because you have the, the line who is going out from the pits and uh, I just break a little bit over the line and uh, I couldn't stop the car. But then I had a very difficult race. Uh, I lost the radio for like 20 laps and uh, I couldn't talk to my team. I was just looking to the, to the boards and it was not so easy to, to know what's going on in the race. But um, and in the first stint, even with the, this little moment, I was so quick. I was able to 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 put down a very good uh, pace, even compared to Lewis, compared to Robert, and um, and I knew I was, um, you know, the the strategy was working very well, and the car was perfect. And then suddenly we we changed to to one stop, so we we put a few to the end of the race, and uh, and then it was the biggest mistake because um, we the 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 track was it was getting dry and dry. And uh, we expect some more rain coming, which uh, my team told me it wasn't the radar, but it, it didn't come. And uh, and then by the time um, Robert stopped, I, 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 I wanted to stop again, but then, you know, it was pretty difficult conversation between the team and we, we just took too long to come back again just to change the tires because I had few to the end of the race. So it was a shame uh, we made a mistake on the strategies. But uh, anyway, I mean, it's good to be uh, t in the podium. You know, we know... The championship is long, and uh, I'm happy with the result, even that I expect uh, the victory, because uh, we had a great car on the, on the dry. Great strategy, I stopped. Maybe the, the, was maybe the last car to stop. Uh, means that we have a great car yesterday in qualifying and today in the race as well. Unfortunately, the strategy didn't work. You were on the softest of the two Bridgestones at the restart. Did that give you any sort of advantage, do you think? You mean on the dry? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, by the time the race was finished, anyway, and uh, I just took the soft because the, the track was still some 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 parts a little damp, and it was a low low working range tire, so maybe it was a little bit better for warm up and everything. So I just, we we just took this tire, but I don't think it was a big difference from the soft and in the hard during the whole weekend. Lewis, returning to you, clean sweep now. Formula Three, GP two, Formula One. You love this place. What does this victory mean to you? I do. I mean, this has got to be the highlight of my career, and I'm sure it will continue. It will, it will be my highlight for the rest of my life. Um, 
you know, just I remember on the the last few laps, I was just picturing, you know, I had to win here a lot of a lot of times, and just to win here would be amazing. But I, you know, I know anything can happen here. Just keep it out of the barriers, and um, I managed to do that. But I have to say a big thank you to to all my team back home and and over here. They did a fantastic job, and um, to all my fans, I've got a lot of fans here, and also back home. You know, I do it for all of you, and and also especially my family. They've they've been here, support me all weekend, and to my mum, lots of love, mum. I'm sure she enjoyed every minute of it, as we did. That's the story of the Monaco Grand Prix from the top three finishers, in particular from the race winner, Lewis Hamilton. We'll be getting yet more reaction when we return in a couple of minutes. Here in Monte Carlo, Lewis Hamilton absolutely delighted with his victory in the Monaco Grand Prix, which puts him back on top of the World Championship table. But, Mark, if we're talking unluckiest men in sport this week, I suppose John Terry might be a strong candidate, but what about poor old Adrian Sutil this afternoon? I think he'd run alongside John Terry at the moment because uh, you have to say Adrian Sutil was doing a great job for the Force India team. Uh, you can see him there, he's uh, heavily depressed, and as he should be, because he was coming up for his best Grand Prix result ever. Uh, position four, it would have been it would have been a great lift for the team. They've been uh, you know, having their struggles throughout this season so far. And basically, it wasn't his fault, and that's the, uh, the worst part for him. It was caused by no, uh, no less than the current world champion, Kimi Raikkonen. Yeah, they were the victims of what was a very ragged afternoon. Uh, knocks him out of the race with damage. He just watched the Ferrari. Look, it's way back. He's not that close, but he's just a bit chip. No great consolation to Adrian Sutil, though. Let's hear his react and, uh, reaction to what's happened this afternoon. And for the whole team. Yeah, really a shame. I mean, we were really close. A few laps to go. And uh, then Kimi crashed into my rear and destroyed my whole race. My best race, for sure, in the career. Yeah, shame. I can't really say something about it, but just, I'm really disappointed. But I mean, halfway through and towards the closing stages for that race, I mean, you, you were the meat in a Ferrari sandwich. Did you ever envisage that that would be the case here at Monza? Well, I knew that in the rain we have a chance. I mean, I knew my, uh, my performance from last year. I was really strong here. And uh, after the first lap in the race, I knew, OK, the conditions, I like them. And I was catching the cars. I took it easy just to try to not go off and something. And then when I got the chance to push, I really pushed and I did fastest laps in the race. It was great. I, I was really, do, really doing good. And uh, it's just uh, so disappointing that in the last three laps, uh, all my work was over. Well, let's Yes, Adrian Sutil and Force India so disappointed with their scant return from this Monaco Grand Prix this afternoon. McLaren, of course, delighted. But what about uh, Ferrari? Starting with an all-Ferrari front row, all they came out with was a third place for Felipe Massa. Let's get the Ferrari reaction from Luca Baldessari with uh, Ted Kravitz. Yeah, down here with uh, Ferrari's Luca Baldessari. Luca, what, uh, what happened? Because they were good strategies, both cars fueled to the end. What happened to Ferrari today? Uh, to be honest, this is uh, one of the things that I have to revise the, <laughs> my data. Well, we, we were fueled to the end, but I'm not sure if it was the right strategy because uh, we were gambling for more rain, but the, the, more rain didn't come. So we, we had to come in anyway for tyres. So this is, I think, at the end of the day, it was a mistake. So, but a part of that, uh, we had done, uh, yeah, we, we had only to lose uh, with this. Uh, different weather uh, focused and uh, and the end of the day we lost a race that uh, I think in a different situation we could have in our end uh, it's unfortunately but uh, I think um, it's uh, it's it's uh, if we take the positive things is uh, now we 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 have to f we, we we have to uh, we are behind in the championship so this is always um, a stronger motivation for us to try to get back with the head down and uh, fight again uh, fight again to to be successful in the next races and there was a, a, a mistake but for Felipe and, and Kimi did he have a, a brake failure or was that just a mistake with the end with uh, with the force India I had to we had to check the data what happened there I'm not sure if he was he breaking to the wet uh, still or a bit too, too late or what happened I'm not sure Force India run your engines, but you must feel sorry for them today. Yeah, well, to be honest, first I feel sorry because we lost points. Then, uh, well, I can be sorry for Force India, for sure, but, uh, but we lost points. 
Luca Baldessari there trying to come out with the positives from the Ferrari point of view, but uh, but he failed, didn't he? Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and uh, both the drivers had a little bit of a funny day in some ways. I mean, Kimi Raikkonen was off the road several times. Massa did actually give the lead up at one point and Kubica climbed his way through. But saying that, I think they did have raw pace, but they read the strategy wrong. And uh, they relied on technology, and in fact, they should have looked to uh, Mother Nature to find out what was going on a little bit more. Baldessari there talking about Raikkonen's coming together with Adrian Sutil, the Force India problem. Uh, let's get the Force India reaction now from Mike Gascoigne, who's been contributing to our coverage right through the afternoon. Well, here's the face of the man that we were talking to all the way through the race, and Mike, sadly, it didn't come out quite as planned. No, I mean, obviously, it was a great event for us, great race from Adrian. Um, you know, we got the luck in uh, all the things, but I think also very much on top of the strategy, um, very in control. We picked up places, Weber and that on the track, because we were controlling when we were switching to dries and everything. So, um, you know, and on the restart, we didn't really have a problem, but, you know, Raikkonen looked as though he always was going to do something stupid, and in the end, he did. How much confidence did you have in Adrian's ability and, and how, were you, how much were you able to base your strategy on that confidence? Well, he's always been uh, good in mixed conditions. Um, you know, obviously last year in the wet round here um, on um, uh, Saturday morning, actually, when it was wet, he was very much, uh, you know, very competitive. So we were pretty confident in him. And, um, you know, even on the restart, it wasn't a problem for us. You know, we felt he could cope with, with Raikkonen behind him, and he could. You know, he made a good restart, was bringing his tyres in, everything was under control, but he just got hit up the back. You know, and the frustration is, if, if that was a Force India driver hitting a, a world champion, you know, we'd expect to get a one or two race ban, but the other way around, nothing ever seems to happen. So uh, it's disappointing that the stewards, you know, I hope they look at it and, and act accordingly. Well, will you be taking it to take the, take the matter to the stewards and asking them to look at it? Uh, yeah, we have asked the stewards immediately to look at it um, because they should do because that sort of driving, you know, you're taking an, someone out uh, needlessly. As I said, if that was uh, someone at the back of the grid, a young guy doing it, they'd, 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 they'd get a penalty, but it doesn't seem to happen the other way. In all honesty, at a place like Monaco in the wet, has he got much of a case? No, not really. Um, I mean, you know, I, I can understand there's some frustration there. Accidents do happen, and uh, if you go throughout today's race, you'd have seen several of them. Yes, he's world champion. Yes, he still makes mistakes, and we've seen many world champions make mistakes. I don't think there'd be any uh, penaliser of, of Raikkonen's performance there, but it's just unfortunate Sutil got uh, taken out of the race. I think his performance today cements his drive uh, definitely into next year, and I think he's well deserving of that. But, um, you know, I, I'm sure the Force India team would still love to have the result. So many stories in this Monaco Grand Prix, but the big one, of course, is the victory for Lewis Hamilton, which puts him back on top of the Drivers' Championship. He was sharing second place with Felipe Massa, but there is Lewis, two points clear of uh, the world champion Kimi Raikkonen, Massa in third, and Robert Kubica a further two points further back in fourth. For a while, it looked like uh, a Monaco win was heading the way of Kubica. And in the Constructors' Championship, well, Ferrari's lead has been uh, hauled back just a little. Uh, McLaren closing the gap with BMW Sauber in third. Looking ahead now, Montreal next, Canada. Uh, Lewis going there in winning form, uh, and he performs well there, doesn't he? Uh, he does indeed. Uh, he likes Montreal. It's a circuit what actually goes very well with the McLaren, but it also suits historically Ferrari. And uh, I think we've got a great race ahead of us in Montreal, and one that uh, Hamilton, Raikkonen and Massa will be looking forward to. But McLaren and Lewis were in danger of losing momentum. They've regained that today. Uh, definitely. They leave here very happy, and they leave here also knowing that Ferrari made a couple of errors today on the track and off the track track as well and all of the team down there will be very happy about that okay it's been fantastic lewis hamilton wins the monaco grand prix you can see our highlights uh, a little later tonight uh, shortly after midnight uh, in fact and highlights also of the two remaining playoff finals also coming up on itv1 Doncaster against Leeds later tonight and a late night slot for Stockport against Rochdale tomorrow. Next motorsport, the touring cars live from Croft on ITV4 next Sunday. And our next Grand Prix, Canada, in two weeks' time. Late afternoon coverage for you, 10 past 5 on the Saturday ITV1 for qualifying. 5 o'clock Sunday afternoon for all the live race coverage from Montreal, the Canadian Grand Prix. And that, of course, is the circuit where Lewis Hamilton got his first breakthrough win. He returns there as a winner. He returns there as world championship leader. Lewis Hamilton wins in Monaco. Bye-bye.